Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, Episode 60, The Truth Shall Make You Free, a guided Christian meditation on John chapter 8, verses 28 through 32. I work as a hospice chaplain, and I've also worked as an ICU chaplain. My purpose in making this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life, to be open to be changed by the Spirit of God. Our meditation today will have six parts, a relaxation, followed by a reading from the Bible, a reflective meditation on that meaning, followed by a prayer asking God for guidance contemplative silence, and visualization on how we can incorporate the insights that we gain from this scripture and from this meditation into our lives. I invite you to reach out to me. You can do that through a page on my website, which is christianmeditationpodcast.com. And if you just put a forward slash contact at the end of that, you'll be able to send me a message. So get into a place where you can sit comfortably and uninterrupted for the next 20 minutes. If you feel comfortable to do so, I invite you to close your eyes. Set this moment apart in your mind to prepare to receive God's word. And as we prepare our bodies, we become aware. As you become aware of your body, it allows us to become aware of any distractions. We also become aware of tension in our body as well. By releasing this, it allows us to be more open to receive God's answers. As we release this tension and distraction, we become more able to receive God's message for us in the scripture. So right now, feel your entire body and look for places of dis-ease. And instead of trying to force that area to relax, simply breathe deeply, allowing air to enter slowly into your body and fill your entire tummy. By taking several slow, deep, and easy breaths, your body automatically starts to respond and you feel calmness radiating throughout your body gently. Already since the beginning of this meditation, you feel more calm and more centered, more ready to focus on the message in this scripture. We don't always get to control this moment. However, by allowing it to be, we realize the realities of our life while still making time and making room for God. Continue breathing slowly as you feel tension and distraction leaving your body and calmness replaces it. You become aware of the ability that you have to act. The ability that you have to place your focus on God and his scriptures. What a great blessing from God that this moment allows you the freedom to take slow and calming breaths in preparation for reading directly from his word. We 
will be reading from John chapter 8, verses 28 through 32. I'll first read from the ESV version. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. For I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And ye will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What does the scripture mean? What message are you receiving in this scripture? What insights, thoughts, and impressions came to you as you listened? Now we'll be reading from the King James Version. Pay attention to see if the insights that you gained are amplified or clarified. Then Jesus said unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What insights did you receive as you were listening to this scripture a second time? Continue breathing deeply and pondering. During this week in the United States, we celebrated Independence Day. As many other countries, we celebrate independence and freedom on this day. And as humans, we have various ideologies and regional interests, but one need that we all share is the need for truth, specifically as pointed out by Jesus in this scripture. The scripture points out the greatest truth of all, our need of God. In the previous verses of the scripture, Jesus was testifying of his actions and how he was following the Father. Not only this, but he prophesied his death on the cross. And when the people heard his witness, they began to believe him. Jesus teaches them that those who believe should follow and stay constant in the word. And those that follow are the disciples. These disciples who believed in this case followed Jesus. They followed what he said 
and continued to grow in truth. And this truth is the sacrifice that Jesus overcame at death and hell. He teaches what frees us. And it is faith that leads to following him. This is by far the greatest need that we have to be freed from. In this world, many millions of people have had their freedoms taken. Many people suffer and have suffered. Many people receive severe punishment for following their conscience. And as tragic as this is, Jesus teaches us that the far greater tragedy is when we fail to be freed by Jesus from sin. In Matthew 10, 28, Jesus teaches that we don't need to fear other people who do not stand as judge in our lives, but to recognize that this role pertains to God. It is his will that carries eternal judgment and reward beyond our deserving. Ours is to do the best we can with what we have and to believe. Perhaps then an argument could be made that the greatest Independence Day that we could possibly celebrate would be Easter Sunday, where Jesus provided all of us the opportunity to be eternally free. And as we celebrate freedoms or perhaps contemplate how they are restricted from us, we can draw connections to the greatest freedom we enjoy as a result of Jesus. Freedom to live with Him in heaven and to overcome this world. Please join me in prayer. Our Father, we recognize in this scripture our eternal need before Thee. We also recognize the need for faith and in this moment we beg of greater faith. We ask that we would have our understanding of this truth enlightened. That we can better understand not only this scripture, but how it applies to us in our lives and how we can draw closer to thee. Soften our hearts and replace our hearts of stone. That we can reach out to each other we can draw ever closer to the example set by the Son, Jesus Christ. And this we say in his name, amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now, asking God for guidance in your life. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now we'll engage in some contemplative silence. The purpose of this is to center on the experience with God, not necessarily an intellectual exercise. For some this is challenging, but as we attempt it more often, it can be very rewarding. So I invite you to sit in contemplative silence now, where the only goal is stillness before God and to experience Him.
I'll give you a couple more seconds. Ultimately, the entire intention of our efforts in this life are to provide course corrections to improve and draw closer to God. So in this moment, I want you to now try to imagine in what ways has this experience allowed you to do that? How can it impact you? And how would you be able to explain that? I'll give you a couple more moments. Now I want you to visualize in as much detail as possible how your life can change as a result of the insight you gained. For example, let's say the insight you gained was nothing more than a calming experience in the Word of God. You can visualize living your life with this peace even as you encounter challenging and difficult aspects of your life. I'll give you a couple more moments. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have a few things that I want to say, and then I'm going to get to a final thought and a final question. So I wanted to say thank you for your positive feedback that you've given me about my daughter and and her showing up on the podcast from time to time. And that's actually why I didn't do this episode last week is because she wanted to be on and she wanted to cover a particular scripture. So... I allowed her to do that because her enthusiasm was so great. One of the things that I am glad about in this podcast is that it is, it is valued by my children, and I don't know if that's always going to be the case, so certainly I want to rejoice in that moment while it lasts. And if there's anything that you want to suggest, or if there's anything you want to recommend, or just give feedback for, I'd love to hear from you at christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact. And it's just a form letter there. If you fill it out and hit submit, it'll send it straight to my email. You can also support the podcast monetarily at patreon.com forward slash Christian Meditation Podcast. So the final question is this. What does Jesus mean when he says the truth will make us free? What does Jesus mean when he says that? And I want to present my cautions on the way I cover individual scriptures and this one in particular. And I hope it's clear that my goal is not to form a deep analysis on the scripture and provide every possible meaning for the original intention. I certainly don't think that Jesus was writing about the 4th of July when, you know, he he originally spoke this. So to be clear, my goal is to provide specific insights which I believe are true and also are represented in this scripture. Equally important lessons could be taught from this scripture about honesty and faith, humility, absolute truth, various other doctrinal points. For example, the concept of freedom here is parallel to other concepts that we recognize in other spheres of life. In this way, I hope that God can use this message to draw us even closer to his loving spirit. As we humbly submit to him, he shows us that which is the greatest importance and has the most power over us eternally. 
ultimately His grace is sufficient for us. And thank God that it is sufficient for me. Let us all celebrate in Christ together. He overcame death and hell so that we, through faith, can receive His greatest blessings. And I pray that His Spirit will be with you throughout the course of your day and throughout the course of your week. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.